Lois Ayn Shir is being sponsored by the Leshkowitz family, Lishos Rochel Basra Kayim, Arya Aleya Sholom, the Kanner family, the Kavdi Offer of Hassan Maisha Ben Yamin, and the Greenbaum family, the Lishos of Lesser, Ben Rabakiva, Aleya Sholom, and Lishos Razel Bas, Rabbi Liazza Aleya Sholom. And don't forget the Jewish at the end. Come with Parsha. Okay, I, uh, <clears throat> Mazel Tov to all of you who are finishing Parsh, uh, Masechtis, uh, Menachis. Uh, since you're completing Menachis, and today is, was Parsh Shlach, I took the liberty of spending my time here on something on which I spent uh, a, a great amount of time researching, and that is the new Tcheles that uh, they have primarily in Eretz Yisrael, you see it here sometimes too, uh, the chalaz in which they are identifying as a snail in the Murex family, and the feeling that that might well be the treles, the chalaz in, and hence the treles. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time being ma'ayin into the sugya, not uh, to paskin for Klal Yisrael, just to know for myself what the likelihood is that this Murex snail is the chalaz in. And after a lot of eon and effort and correspondence with those who are involved and their answers to me, I'd like to share with you my, my basic research into the Indian and why I would say, my own opinion, Tamil Chamu could disagree, my opinion is if there's a 50% chance it's the Chalazan, we'd be mechayiv to use it. If there's a 10% chance, that will be called the Mira Matsui, so then it will be a nice thing to use it. If there's less than a 10% chance, the Allah is you're allowed to eat trefis, which is less than 10% chance is treif, which is why we're not baidik uh, for any type of trefis, which is less than 10%, a Miyuchena Matsui. And to be honest, as I'll try to explain to you, I don't think there's a 10% chance that it's correct. Uh, there's a 0% chance, in my opinion that the Rambam held that this is the Chalazen. The Grismash, it's klar, 100%, that he did not hold it, that this is it. The Basham did not hold. And I'd like to explain to you where it comes from. The Hanacha with which I began being Mayan into this sugya was that we don't pass in Halachis for Midrashim. You get a Medrash, or a Latin word, which fits with an Arab word, which fits with a Balaz and Rashi, we, I never saw in Paiskim Shepaskin Halachis based on these things. And the Halach has to be Paskin based on Shaz Bavli. And for this to be the Chalaz, it has to stim, it has to possibly stim, at least with every single Gemara in Shaz Bavli. I'm talking about the Pasha to Gemara. If there would be a, a Tiyufta from one Gemara, it would be a Tiyufta, it would be finished. There's zero chance that there's the Chalaz. So I'd like to do, I made a list of the uh, eight Gemaris that talk about the Chalazen. And I went through them with effort and going through the Svarim of those who produce uh, the Trelas and hold that it's correct and learning what they wrote about it. I want to be Magdim, that they are tremendous Tamidei Chachamim and Aaron's the people. It's not a political thing. Some people, everything is political. But they're Aaron's the people, uh, both in the yeshiva world and in the modern Orthodox world, it's more in the modern Orthodox world, but they have the Torah who feel that it's correct. And today I'd like to explain why I think it's a toss. And I have a letter that it was written to me to answer my tainus, and uh, I think the letter uh, itself, it concedes some of the points. Uh, but I, whatever time will permit, I'd like to share with you. Uh, I'd also like to be magdim that Kabbalistic ideas that the Chalazim has gone forever has no place in Halacha. Uh, halacha, we pass him based on the Paiskim. And whether uh, the uh, Revolbi writes in one of his letters, a Klal Gadol, that whoever quotes the Zaya and the Arizal directly is quoting it incorrectly. Uh, he writes, I think, to Rav Palam, the Ben Ishchai from the Mekubalim, writes that we don't understand any Zayars unless it's past through one of the G'day Le'am who explained it to us. So again, I'm talking about Shaz Bavli. I'm going to go through eight Gemaris, try to go learn the Rambam, and see if it's any possibility, a likelihood, forget it, but at least a possibility, 
that the murex is correct. <coughs> the first Gemara is a Gemara which fits very well, the only Gemara which fits very well with what has been found. And it's a Gemara Shabbos Chavav that says that the Chalazan is found between Salme Tzor and Haifa in the Mediterranean Sea, in the area between the cliffs of Tzor, of Tyre, and Haifa is where this is found. Now, that fits very well with what they found, that is Taka, where it's found. And that's the one Gemara that stims. Now, they publicized pictures of caves uh, from thousands of years ago with shells of the snail to prove that this snail is the Chalazan. Now, that's an absurdity, because there was no sign on the cave, Talis Fabric. No indication, it's indication that you may die from these snails. Well, why did they may die from the snails? Question is, did they make it for tzitzis, or did they make it for other things? So the pictures of the caves is just something to fool people. It has absolutely no bearing on whether it's the Chalazan. But the fact is that it stims well with the Gemara in Shabbos Chavav that says where it's located. After that, it's all downhill. The Gemara in Shabbos Tafayin Dalid says that the malach of kosher umat here, the one of the two of the lamed test malachas are tying and untying. The kosher umat here were in the base hamikdash. She came tzide chalaz and kosher umatirin. That the tzide chalaz and would tie and untie. Of course, in the midbar they didn't catch chalaz, but it means they didn't plant anything either. They made the mid, they made the mishkan within a, a very short period of time. But it means to make it, you would need a kosher chalaz. And Rashi says. Call Rishtois Asuyin Ksharim Ksharim. The Rishainim consistently talk about nets, using nets to catch the Chalaz. Now, immediately, this is problematic. You use a net to catch something that flies in the air, so you need a net to catch it. Or something that swims in the water, you need a net to catch it. If there was a creature that crawls on the floor, you wanted to catch a creature that crawls on the floor, you would never use a net. Because a net is something you use to be able to pass through air or water. If somebody is trying to catch a mouse, I've never seen anybody use nets. And in fact, for the chalazan, the way chalazan is caught, baskets with bait are put in the bottom of the sea. The chalazan, which is a snail, the, the one that they, they're identifying as a snail, and that snail is a uh, very slow crawling creature. It crawls into the box to get its bait. And uh, then you pull up the box and you have the chalaz. You don't have to use a box. You can use anything you want on the bottom of the sea. There's no reason in the world that anybody would use a net. Now, to this, I got the response they gave me was that, in fact, That the Chachmi Umas Ha'ilam said it's a Derek. They didn't give me a Mara Market. However, in the Torah Mada Journal, an article was printed uh, saying that uh, that this is the Chalazan. So there they write their source, they write Aristotle and Pliny explain. The method for catching murex snails was using baited wicker baskets and nets. Who's going to go look up Aristotle and Pliny? So you can get away with it. I looked up Aristotle. They, they write where they're getting it from. Aristotle has a series of books on, on nature. And in his History of the Animals, in Book 15, Chapter 5, which is their Mara Mokin, it does not say a word about nets. The language, and this is a translation from Greek, it may not be a perfect translation, but uh, it says the following. Fishermen in past times used not to lower creels or attach them to bait, so that very often the animal got dropped off in the pulling up. At present, however, they always attach a basket, so that if the animal fall off, it is not lost. If the animal falls off the bait... Then he explains, the animal is more inclined to slip off the bait if it's full. If the animal is full, if it's empty, it's difficult to shake it off. 
there's no mention of any net in this whole chapter. It talks about creole. A creole is a uh, basket that's used to hold fish. It talks about wicker baskets. And if you wanted to lower a rope with bait, I guess you could do it the way you catch a fish. But the allusion to the fact that Aristotle said anything about nets is incorrect. As far as Pliny the Elder, I don't know how to get a hold of his books, so I didn't look it up. But the reference to nets is not consistent with catching snails. It's consistent with catching fish or any swimming creature, but not with snails. So that Gemara does not fit well at all. Did yes. say nets? Rashi says nets. Rashi, Rashi and most Rishayim say nets. The Gemara does not say nets. It's true. Okay, it could be they used to be kaisha the baskets. Why would they be kaisha basket? I have no idea. But yeah, wicker baskets are not made with tying unless you have a rope on it. We have wicker baskets, and there's no nothing tied on it. It's woven. Irig would be a malacha. So it's like maybe it's a kasha from Rashi. It's Rashi and the Ritva, and I would guess if you look in the Ramban and the Rashi, you'd also see references to Rishdays. Yes. Why would you stick it under the sand? It's possible they use nets. I can't say. But they're telling me Aristotle said nets. I have Aristotle. He doesn't say nets. Caves? The caves are not where they caught them. That's where they brought them. Right. Even if they weren't used for trailers, right. That's a time. She warned you not to use this. Not to use this. Okay. It's a time. Okay. That's it. The third Gemara is the Gemara in the same Sogi. It says that Sad Chalazin. You don't know what color those snails produce. Let's say they produce the dye. The they actually produce numerous red. colors. I want to get but to. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's not a time. It's like to warn about. Because it may not be the same color. Alright, let's. Uh, I'd like to go beside that. I want to. I'll talk about the color. I'd like to go beside that. I'll tell you why they think they know the color. I'll get to it. The third Gemara is the same sugi. It says, That's the biggest cash on them. Anybody who learned anything about Hilchis Seda knows that there's a snail. When you catch a snail, you're not Chayim Mishum Seda. Snails move exceedingly slowly. And anything that you could get Veshicha Achas in one lunge is not so made. This is the most difficult kasha on saying that a snail is the chalazen. Uh, they did write back to me, He says it's shver anyway on other references to the chalazen, but there's no teretz that, that's brought. And if it's not chalazen as chayiv, it's very hard to understand that it could be a snail. This is a major problem. The only way out that I know, which they didn't mention, is to say that the tchelas and the chalazin in the mishkan is not the same chalazin as on the tzitzis, and tchelas as the tzitzis. It sounds like a tremendous daichik, and probably it is. Rabbi Yaakov in the Sefer on Chumash entertains the possibility that it's two different tchelas and chalazin. But those who are involved in making this can't say that, because one of the shtarka shittis is, as you mentioned, that there's no other kala hadoimuloi besides kala ilan. So to say that, that there were two chalazans that made things called chetcheles would not be something that they're nicha with. It's the only way I know to get out. You get out of both kashas from Mesef to Shabbos. Because then the chelas and the chalazan of the Mishkan was one. It was also chalazan, also chelas. Chelas and chalazan of the tzitzis was another. It's not nicha to anybody such a mahalach. But it's the only mahalach that I know to get out of the problem. So... Uh, not clearly, but it, he leaves room for such a thing. So three Gemaras I mentioned. The uh, Shabbos Gemara Chavav, which is Taka, the location, is, is what they say. The two other Gemaras that are problems, the Rishdais and the Tzad being Chayiv. Now the fourth is an interesting, is a Gemara Sanhedrin Tzadik Aleph. It says that if someone goes up to a mountain, Ola Lahar, all he sees is one chalazen. And the Gemara says, It rains, and the smale kulay chalazenes. 
And it gets filled with many of these creatures. You know that when it rains, the worms come up. Worms live under the ground. When it rains, the water seeps into the holes. They can't breathe. So they can't breathe. They come up. So any creature that lives under the ground, when it gets, when it gets wet, comes up. So the Gemara says that's the chalaz and bahar in a mountain. There's a chubas marsham, chelik hey, I must have given the wrong maramak, and it's chuva lamed aleph. It's the closest chuva to the murex chalaz. The tshuva says that it's a creature that lives in the water and that migrates out of the water but always goes back to the water, which fits with the murex. The problem, though, is that the murex cannot live out of water for more than a few hours. It needs water to live. And as soon as it dries, it dies unless it goes back into the sea. And this is something that that I got the information I got is from the people involved in the murex. It can only live for a few hours. That it could go up a mountain, live up a mountain, and when rain comes, bring its way up. Doesn't fit with the language. Uh, it doesn't fit with this murex. It doesn't stim bechlau. The answer that those involved have said is that oh, that's a different chalazin. The Yad Ramah says the Sanhedrin Sadek Aleph chalazin is not the same chalazin as the Tchelas, which is fine. So then the Gemara is not a Raya, it's not a Kasha. The Marsham understood that that is the Chalazan. As I said earlier, there's no way to understand the Chubas of Marsham to stim with today's Murex. All right, the, the Marsham was talking theoretically. He didn't see any creatures. He was explaining the Gemara. But Lamaisa, this is a fourth Gemara that mentions it, which doesn't stim with today's Chalazan. And the only way out is to say, oh, it's referring to a different Chalazan, which could be. The fifth Gemara is the well-known Gemara Menachas. People who talk about the Tchelas and Chalaz and without having enough time to prepare just talk about that Gemara. It says Gufay Daimel. It's obviously uh, some type of Midrashi Gemara. Gufay Daimel Yam and Buryasay Daimel Adag V'ayla Pamachas La'ayin Shana. So that I'm asking it doesn't shtim but it doesn't have to shtim. They were already Halcha by Nemushais whether coming up once in 70 years is meant literally or whether coming up once in 70 years is meant just that it's a, it's a rare creature, hard to get. So I'm asking, it's, there's no mashmois from there. Gufay Demel Adag does not fit. Uh, what they have shown in the advertisements, if you trace the snail, you take away the tracing, it's a little similar to a fish. Very little. It's like the stars are similar to the, uh, to the constellations. It's, it's a shvacha thing, but it's hard to ask it to Yufta from the Gemara, which at any rate... It's difficult, and uh, as I say, that's a fifth Gemara. It's going to say there. It's not. There's no raya from the Gemara to this. It's certainly not a raya. Uh, it's certainly not oila achas hashem All right, but Gedalei uh, Yisrael already said that oila achas hashem mishana lav dafka. It's a Rashi in, in Yirmi Adun Beis uh, that seems to say it's found all the time. And Memela, this kasha is not such a shtaka kasha. Today, nothing is rare because, because we already are sophisticated. The murex is not a deep water creature. It's a creature that's in water, which is between, uh, most of the time, between 5 and 15 meters deep, which is not very deep. It's likely that once you know it's there, you can get it. But it's hard to know. Today, things are very sophisticated, and uh, it's easy to catch. I don't, I don't know if it was rare then. The sixth Gemara, to me, is the biggest Tiyufta of all. The Gemara, in a few places, about Metziah Samach Aleph, one of them, says that a Kaddish Baruch Hu is Osid Lefraya, Kaddish Baruch is going to punish those who take Kala Ilan and pretend it's Tchelis. The Gemara is saying that there's something called Kala Ilan, which is similar to Tchelis. Why would anybody say Kala Ilan is Tchelis? Kala Ilan is cheap. It's an inexpensive vegetable-based dye. The cheles is expensive. It certainly was expensive. It's still pretty expensive. It's an expensive dye. And the mela, now this is the, the raya that those who are for the murex bring, the strongest raya. I have to tell you, there was about 20 years ago, there was an, uh, an assemblage in YU introducing uh, the new cheles. And I got a tape of Rav Herschel Shechter spoke there. And, uh, and Dr. Norman Lamb spoke. 
And Dr. Lamb showed a, he shut off the lights and showed, I had the tape, I couldn't see it, but uh, he showed, Kala Ilan, we know what it is. Let's say they're right. Because the word indigo was used by Rishayinim, and today we have indigo. Let's assume they're right. So the indigo color and the trellis that they're making is the same color. It's a raya, it's the same. Now what he showed was the molecular structure of the indigo dye and the molecular structure of the trellis dye. And they're exactly the same. There's no difference between them. You can take things out of different products, just like if you take glycerin out of an animal, out of the fats of an animal, or glycerin out of vegetable fat. You make glycerin. No lab could tell you if it comes from a kosher sauce from flesh or trefer sauce from vegetables, because the glycerin itself is a, is a molecule, a specific molecule. So if you take oxygen out of water, once you take oxygen, you can't tell the it came from water or it didn't come from water. The dye molecule, which is in the indigo and in the trellis, is exactly the same. That was the, what he showed, and that's what they printed. And now this makes it impossible that the trellis is, the, is, is this indigo, is this molecule. First of all, Nobody in their right mind would spend money on tcheles dye. The tcheles dye was expensive, not because it's tzitzis, because kings used it. It was, it was used by everybody. If the molecular structure is exactly identical, it's absolutely illogical that anybody would spend a penny more on the same exact dye, which you can't tell the difference. Once you make the dye, you have it in a pot. No one can tell the difference. It's illogical that anybody would spend any more money on the Murex dye than on the indigo dye. What? I can't hear him. I'm talking about the kings. The kings spend money on it. Why would they spend money on it? The kings didn't care about the halacha. All right, it's okay. It's okay. Now, besides that, Chazal do say a difference between them. They say there are ways of checking. You get the dye, the dye of the Murex. You can get... You can use soaps, and you can use all kinds of things, and whatever the Chazal say, you could be baitik. The Kali Ilan comes out, and the Tcheles doesn't come out. If the molecular structure is 100% identical, then there's a problem. This would be a Tiyufta Legamri on the whole thing. People pay for the day. And what about the second Nakuda? The fact that one comes out and one doesn't. So the truth is, they realized, since 20 years ago, they realized this is a Tiyufta. They, they, they came to the realization that this is a tiyufta. Is the process the same? What? The process of dying may be Well, once you have the molecules, it's hard to understand. They say that it's not entirely true what Dr. Lane said, and what they printed is not exactly the same. There's something that sticks to one and doesn't stick to another. There's been a, a, like a give-back on it. But whatever the give-back is, the, at least the way it was presented initially, if anything, is something of a, of a problem. You can answer. You can answer. But to say it's a riot, it's, it's a very difficult thing. My seventh aura is the following. I don't know if any of you ever saw how this is made. I was interested in it from the beginning. Not to ask Cassius on it, but perhaps I was interested. 20 years ago when it came out, I invited someone to the shul. Then we were still in the rented quarters. And he brought the murex and he made trellis in front of us, however long it took. He didn't make trellis on the threads, but he made the dye. This summer I went again to where they make it. And uh, I was in a place where they make it, out in Eretz Yisrael. And I was very impressed by the people, very impressed by... I was most impressed because I spoke to them and they were masking certain problems. And it was give and take, like you're learning a sugi. The thing that they'll tell you, anytime you go, one of the spectacular things they tell you is this, that, you know, this is the third, uh, the third candidate for trellis. You all know the Radzina had the squid, which was a trellis. Rav Herzog had the genitalia, which was a trellis. And uh, now we have the murex. The murex, Rav Herzog entertained the possibility as a trellis, as the chalazin. But he rejected it because the dye is purple, not blue. So what they have discovered is that if you prepare the dye in, this, uh, in direct sunlight, it turns blue instead of turning purple. When it comes out of the chalazin, it's like mucus, like uh, mucus, uh, almost transparent mucus. It changes color when the oxygen gets into it. If you take it out in sunlight, 
it turns blue. And they make a big show out of it. Anytime you go and they do it, because there was Taka Hamsa, usually you dye things indoors. How did they discover it? I don't know. They found this Hamsa, and they did it by us in the shul. They put it on a windowsill, which was in direct sunlight. And then they finished the class, and by the time they finished, that turned blue. Who discovered it? It has a bad odor, and that's why they took it out. Okay, good. Now, I have a problem. It's nice, this is what they talk about. The problem is that the Gemara and Menachis Membeis, as well as the Rambam, give directions on how to make trellis. Chazal don't always do it, but the Gemara here gives directions. How do you, how do you make this trellis? We put it into a pot, we cook it together. We take a little off in an eggshell. We taste it to make sure it's ready. And that's how we make it. Well, exactly, it means whatever you like. You take it out in an egg to taste it because the pot that you taste is possible. Etc. It doesn't say my rai is only. It doesn't say put it in sunlight. That's their whole speech. Amazing, you got to put it in sunlight. The Rambam also. The Rambam gives directions on making chelus. Ketzat soivin chelus shal tzitzis. Like in that seven. Shoyin oisei besid. Akach mechapsin oisei etchei naki. Mersichin oisei. Akach mevi and dam chalazin. Who dag shaday meinu lein chelus. But all my shachur kedyain has black. This also doesn't. The Rambam can't possibly hold of this chelus. The Rambam says, "Dom is shachar kedyai." It comes out black. Ubi yam emelach umatsui. Now it's not found the yam emelach. The the rishonim that taich it means it's salt water, as opposed to fresh water. It's found. V'noisem besadam liyira. V'noisem nimir samamanim kabeya kumanyo kiyotze ben kedar shatzava meisin. Rasiche noisem noisem bayatzemer chiyase ken rekia zel tchel shatzitzis. If every time they give a class about it, this is their whole speech. It has to be in sunlight. Why didn't the Rambam mention it? Why doesn't the Gemara mention it? It's a difficulty, a major difficulty, with the possibility of the murex being the murex. Is it proof? It doesn't prove. But it, it's a problem. It, if it's kosher? If it's kosher? Probably not. And that itself is a discussion which I didn't want to go into. The question, I'm mentioning problems from Shas. There are Gedele HaPaiskim who held that it has to come from a kosher creature. The Chida among them. This was dealt with in the Sefer Einat Chelas from uh, the Redzina. It's not itself a Tiyofta, the Achalkim. But the point you're making is a good point. I'm, like I said when I started, I want to just go through Gemara, Rambam, has the Shtim, if, if I have a Shverakite from a Chida, so it's a Shverakite, it's not a Tiyofta. But, how come they taste it? How come they taste it? You're allowed to be toyim. I'm sorry, the Gemara in Brachas says you're allowed to taste, taste tray for things, but pear, and pilot. Uh, it tastes like Isaiah's in your pilot. The Gemara says you're allowed. Food, the Chazam made a you might swallow. If it's not food, so you're allowed to. The Pischei Tshuva in Sadi Ches, the beginning of Tarub, the second Pischei Tshuva, talks about tasting soap, tray for soap. When there's no Chashash swallow, you're allowed to taste uh, no kosher things in your pilot. With Loch Shash you saw deliberately, I mean. Yeah, I'm going to get back. I want to come back to the Rambam. You're right. I, I meant to prove from the Gemara so far. Anyway, the eighth Gemara, and I'll try to sum up, is by me also a Kasha Gedoilad Ma'id, except most people don't, uh, don't appreciate it. The Gemara Megillah Davov says that Zvulun was Am Cheref Nafsha, I think it's the Lashen, that Zvulun was unhappy with Cheref Nafsha at Yisrael. So Rabbi Hashanah told him, Kulam Tzrich for two things, for some type of crystal and for the Dam Chalaz. Everyone needs Zvulun for the Chalaz. <coughs> now, if you ask 100 from Yidin where Zvulun's Chalak was in Eretz Yisrael, 99 out of 100 will tell you it was on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. The problem is, Zvulun L'Chaifa, I mean, everybody knows. The problem is that if you don't learn Yeshua, so that's what you think. In Sefer Yeshua, the gvul of zvul of every shevet is described from city to city, an entire border of every single shevet. 
It's not emis that Zvulun had a chalik at the shore of the Mediterranean. It's not emis. Some Rishayim Maha Taich that it was at the edge of the Kinneret, and they Taich L'chayf Yamim to mean the Kinneret, which the Kinneret is not a salt water lake, it doesn't have any chalazan in it. And others, the Gra said, has the Kasha, Ras L'chayf Yamim Yishkai. So he says there is a Ritzua of Zvulun that went to the Yam, a thin Ritzua. If you take any in any map, you take an Oscar Yeshua, Judaica Yeshua, anybody who ever made a map, you'll see Zavulun is not on the banks of the Mediterranean. Those who stick in, in Oscar, they stick in the Groz Shita, they stick in a thin line that leads to the Yam. So what's Pshat Zavulun L'chaifam Yishka and Zavulun is a ship? The answer is Zavulun were the sailors in Klai Yisrael. No question. They were the ones who went on ships and caught whatever had to be caught. But you have to understand, the murex is caught a few yards offshore. The water, as I told you, doesn't have to be very deep. It's 12 feet deep. You can catch chalazin. You don't need one shavit. There were many sh- usher had a big chalik on the, on the border of the Mediterranean. What's with Zvulun? Why Dafka Zvulun? Why Zvulun? Why not usher? Why not the other shvatim that were on the bank of the Mediterranean? <coughs> now, if you hold, like the Radzina, that it's a deep water fish, then, or any deep water creature, then you need sailors. You can't go out to the sea to catch things that are deep water creatures unless you have sailors. You need Zvulun. Zvulun who lived in the sea, they were the sailors. But to go and say that the Murex has to come out to Zvulun is a Dava Pella, because if you look at the film, I saw they produced the film, people go out in the little... It's like a rowboat, just it's a motorboat. Little boats, and they jump over the edge, and they go, they go down, and they come up for five minutes later with a basket with, uh, with, with the snails. It was put there before, and they go back and get it. You don't need sailors for that. You don't need a uh, sailor man to go and get it. Now, I wrote this kasha. It seems to be, to be a big kasha. So the answer I got didn't answer the question. He just says, I... He says, Masha Kasafta, number eight, says, in Murkas or Chalaz, in Murek, so Chalazan, how you know, says, Samuel Chalaif, Lamalan Zvulun, Oichmatin Kiblunachal Alayam. That's what I wrote to them. So he writes, What do you mean? Bequab, a parashas face, he said, Behedia, Zvulun, Chalaif Yam, and Mishkain, the grass kasha. He doesn't write it from the grass. Mavor, she kibblunachal, Chalaif Yam at Sidai, be your Chaina, Yam, Samuch Litzor. Vangamar Psachim, Akif Yama, Sista, Birasa, Batgash Kudim is Vulun Kasi, it says Vulun Chayyam Mishkan. Says a sailor, they checked him out, and he came and says Vulun, you know, Stakasa. But it has nothing to do with the Kasha. So it's very, very difficult for me to understand this last thing. Now, I don't want to base what I'm saying on this last Nakuda, because, like I said, 99 out of 100 Yidin are positive that Zvulun's Chalik was on the banks of the Mediterranean. So I'm going to sound like I'm coming with uh, some kukushita and saying this. So I mean, it's Hashem, someday we'll get there in Yeshua and I'll explain the, how many Mepharshim is this kasha that has a shtim with the Pasuk. So this, I don't want anybody to walk away and say, this is my main kasha. To me, it's a Ike kasha. To you, maybe it's not. You don't know if I'm saying it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. I don't know if you have an art scroll uh, uh, Yeshua. You don't have to read the words of Nach, that's for sure. You just look at the map. You look at the map, you'll see Zvulun, and any map of Eretz Yisrael, Zvulun does not have a chalik on the banks of the Mediterranean. Either it's on the banks of the Kinneret, or it's, it's landlocked, or if you go to Gra, it sticks out till, till the end. So, let, let me sum up and tell you the problems. I don't think it's clear at all. It doesn't say a word about whether the sailors or not. It says Vulun was upset. And they said, Kulam Tzrichen Lach. That's Lashon Lord. Everyone needs you for the Chalazan. It makes zero sense. Yekilus Vulun was the only one on the Mediterranean. Let's say Zvulun was on the Mediterranean. The only one? Everybody was on the Mediterranean. Usher had the biggest Chalazan along the Mediterranean. What about the color? Anyway, what about the colors? Let me t- talk to you about the color. Truth is, from the Murex, you can make m- many colors. But just like it could be purple... It could be blue. Let me... I'm gonna, all right, what I want to do is, I want it just, just to be Masudar. What I did is I went through eight Gemaras. Seven of the eight Gemaras are difficulties. 
let's say you answer all the difficulties. So my taina to them is, and I've spent hours talking to those involved, nothing political. But I told them from Turutzim, you don't make halachis. You have to have at least a raya from a gemara, some type of a, of a hechetimsa to bring a raya. There's no, all the gemaras, you can answer. It's a different halaz and sem. There's no place in Shas except the location. There's any mashmois towards this. Now, add to that the Rambam. The Rambam says three things that don't stim. First of all, he says it's a dog. A dog means fish. No? Dog means fish. If you go in her song, there's a store selling dog, you don't expect to get snails. It means a fish. Rashi in one place says a fish, in one place says toilas, a worm. I don't know, maybe a worm is a snail, I don't know. But, but Toysis and Shabbos says it's a dog. The Rambam says it's a dog. Now their answer, they have a gra in Mesech des Kalim, I think Perak Yed Aleph, where he teaches a Mishnah there in Kalim, that kol masha nimtza b'yam kari dag. The things found in the yam are also called a dag. But since this is found in the yam, that's the answer that the... Again, you can't buy a shita from emphoring shverakaitin. But it's, it's not a satisfactory teretz. And what's most difficult is the Ramam says that it's black, it's shachar. It's black. It's not black. It comes out clear. If you let it develop in indoors, it turns purple. Outdoors, it turns blue. And it's very hard to get away from it. The Rambam, A, says it's a dog. B, says it's black. And C, in making it, doesn't describe that you need sunlight. Now, it's not a tiyufta. It could be that maybe the Allah is not like the Rambam. But to try to stop it into the Rambam and say, the dog doesn't mean dog. And shachar doesn't mean shachar. Shachar means if you leave it somewhere and it ages for a long time, it turns black. When he told me this, I said, what? If it ages, it turns black? The similar of Tchela says that it, 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 the tzevah's ain't a yaf, it never changes. He said, no, if you put it in wool, it never changes. But if you leave it out, then it could change. But that's what the Rambam meant. Dama, dama, the Rambam is describing, Kei Tzer Oisana, Mevi and Dam Chalazan, Hu Dag Shtoy Meil Leinat Chelas, V'dami Shachar Kedyai, V'dami Shachar Kedyai, V'dami Shachar Kedyai, he means that if you leave it, stay a long time, it turns black. And to me, it's a pella that anybody could say such a thing in the Rambam. It's a double pella. I think the Rambam is zero percent chance that it's it. Why? The Gemara in one place seems to say that it has to be. And what you're saying is correct. I'll tell you, I, I, I pointed out to them that Rav Moshe certainly doesn't hold of, uh, of what they're saying. Rav Moshe has one tshuva about the tcheles. It's a tshuva on a different topic. The beginning of the tshuva, it's Yerodeh, Beis, Kuflamid, Gimel. So I don't know, I wrote them what Rav Moshe says. They wrote me back, he doesn't say it. So I don't know, uh, maybe I wrote them the wrong Maramokim. I don't know. Rav Moshe is bothered by Akasha. The Akasha we shy to me ask. How could it be the Tcheles comes from the Chalaz and, and you eat some Amonim. Echitesi. So Ramesha answers that since we know the Kabbalah Tcheles is blue, and since it comes out black, so therefore it must be it's with ear of some Amonim. Vada Rabbi, Yitzvah B'dam Chalaz and Levada, he posled, then he said Tcheles, Shomer Taira. That's not Tcheles, so come on Shomer Rabbi, B'dam Chalaz and Asma, who Shachar Kedyai, then he said Tcheles. I, I must have written the wrong Maramakim to them, or they looked it up in the wrong place. Ramesha is Klar. He's coming, he's talking about something else. And he's talking about it, how could you just add some of The Torah says Tchelas. He says, since it's black and the Kabbalah is it's blue, that's how we know. Now, whether Ramesha's lumb is schwer, it's easy, but Ramesha's zikha, 0% that he held that this is it. He says it's, it's black when it comes out. In, the, in a million years, he's not going to get the murex to come out black. It comes out the color, like I said, of saliva. It's, it's, a, it's a, cloudy, a cloudy clear. So, to, to sum up, what I'm saying is, is zicha no gemaris except the location that have any meshmaris. There are three major problems. The fact that if the molecule is identical, it doesn't fit. The idea that yechayev on seida, whatever you say about the nets, yechayev on seida for catching a snail, that's also kosha ad ma'ayit, in the Torah Mada journal, they answered it, but I don't understand the words. I can read you. It's a very short piece. I read you the words. Maybe if the person would be, he'd explain it. But he answered the question. But uh, I, 
But I, I can give it to you. You can look at later. If I read the words, you're not going to know, and I don't think anybody could understand how it is. Is the question? But I have no, I have no problem. I'm, I'm saying the, it's not the Rambam. There's no raya from a Rashi or a Tosis. There's no raya. There are shverakaitin, and there's come out no raya except for the location, which is a raya. There's zero rayas to this particular creature being being. Now I'd like to add. Do we know that there's only one There could be many that are called chalazin. Could they all be for I don't know. Maybe could could be. I don't. I'm still working on one, but uh, could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Well, the way the Rambam describes it, it comes out black, and by boiling it in here, some of them it turns blue. The Yorick Rashi, I don't know how to answer. I don't know. It could be. It, I understand. It could be. It changes. I'm aware of it because I see that everyone talks about it. The, the Radzina in the Sefer, Avi Sefer ain't Chelas, he talks about the problem with the Rashi. There are a number of problems with Rashi. Rashi says, I want to place Dag, I want to place Telas. It's also hard. Now, now, there's one, there's one which one? Um, the Murex? No, the, uh, the squid. Yeah. The squid is carved the black, yeah. There's a there's a major problem with the resinas trail. I think it's well known. I think it's pretty much accepted by ninety nine percent that the resina was was fooled that he was incorrect. And and yeah, but um, to talk about this, I I want to add whatever time will allow a few nikudas about the Latin words, which they make a big spiel about the Latin words uh, from which it comes. Um, I think it's, again, misleading. It's easy to talk uh, about subjects that people don't know about. As a matter of fact, they passed uh, in the shuls recently a, a totally, totally misleading uh, piece of paper. I, it was in yeshiva also. And this was their, their new hanacha. And I don't, they, I don't think these are Tami the Chaman doing it. Because they had, that on the light spectrum... Uh, this particular color of blue reflects at 613 nanometers. 613 is Taryag. It's a Raya, it's the right one. It's a, some Kabbalistic Raya. Now, besides the fact that the number of nanometers on a light spectrum is arbitrary, it doesn't come from Sinai, the thing itself was not true. The Metchila wasn't true. And uh, I'm telling you, was Nizbar, there's a from years, a professor of optics in New Jersey, First of all, there's no such thing as exactly 613 on the light spectrum. Anything in the light spectrum is within a range. Nothing is always exactly, even to the eye, it's the same color, it's not. And secondly, 613 nanometers on the light range is orange. It's not blue. What did they mean? There's a way of measuring all light, all color comes from reflection. If you have all the colors, something is black. You separate in a spectrum, in a prism, you get different colors. Different, what? All colors is white, no, no colors is black. If you get something that reflects different colors of the spectrum, you end up with blue. If it refre- reflects other colors. The murex dye, the, that color reflects... 613, it's really minus 613 in the spectrum. The spectrum was drawn up, it's, it was inverted, it's really supposed to be down. It Up would be orange. 613, it, by reflecting all the orange parts and red parts of the spectrum, you end up with blue. So that, it was just such a misleading, and it was silly from the first place. Why does 613 nanometers have to do anything with rayas? It was just certain things that are said are said with a absurdity, and it shouldn't be, it shouldn't even be. The truth is, they wrote, the, I'm talking about, tell me, the Chamim involved, the Samaritan Israel, they wrote to me that the Maskim, this thing with it being in the caves, has nothing to do with anything, they wrote in the beginning of their letter. And um, these things are just made to confuse people. Now, uh, and the Latin words, I want to tell you about Latin words, I don't know much about Latin, 
The Radzina also had a raya, that it's the squid, also from Latin words. In the Enat Chelis, page Chav Dalit, he has rayas, the Itter calls it Lamasma, the squid, and he brings that in Latin, uh, the Itter calls that the Chalazin was a Lush in Lamasma, I may not be pronouncing it right, but no one knows the difference, and in Latin it's the same word. So, uh, and he writes, Anu Tmei Ma Mishu Ben Torah Shei Fak Fek Baraya Zu. He says, the the Chacham Tzvi Ki Yitzah Boi Bur Araya Lin Yen Dina L'Gabi the Maror M'Lashaynis from the Lashon of Latin. So he says, he has a Raya Brura from Latin. And that's first of all. And second of all, they bring a Raya from a Radak, from the Latin word used in the Radak for the Chalazan. It's hard to tell from the Sefer if it's the Radak or if it's... Uh, if it's uh, a different one of the Rishayim, that that's this Chalazim, but it's a plea, because that Redak, I have the Lashon here, he's describing something he saw and he has. And that's saying, he was talking about the Murex, and he had it in front of him, and he called it this Latin word, which is this Murex. So why didn't the Redak put on Tchelos, if it's that way? Like, why didn't he? If he had everything we had, and he meant a ring a raya for what he said. My point is, that raya is from Latin Lashonim, Nobody, you don't pass in halachis. If you have a lach, you bring a raya, it's a nice raya. We don't pass it from the archaeology of the caves, not from the Latin. We have to pass it based on Rishayim, Paiskim, on Gemaris. It, to me, it's a bit of a dovapella, the whole mahalach. Now, I do want to tell you that another thing that they're very strong about, I'm quoting from the Hagdama that they wrote to me in, in their letter. Oydesh la Hagdam, Bibirur Maosach Alazn. Dover Yoduahu. The Chalazan is not an individual creature. It's a family. It includes everything. All creatures that have a, a uh, snail's... Uh, what's the word for it? I guess is the... Okay. He writes the W do a call and they repeat it a few times. It's not a W do a call. There were Gedele Oilam who held that the squid is the chalazin and it's a fish. It doesn't crawl on the ground and it doesn't have a on its back. It doesn't have a little house on the back. So to say that the chalazin is snails is fine. But to base a sheet on W do a call. The Marsham said, the Marsham entertained the past. It said that the Marsham wore the Radzina's trail. I don't know if it's true or not. They say he wore it be, be, be secretly. And the Rishul Kutner, in the letter printed in Dayna Trailas, is masking him that it could be the Trailas. And the Beis Halevi, in his rejection of it, he didn't say it can't be a fish. Nobody said it. So my point is, my first point is, it really doesn't stim with the Mars. It's a Tmiya. To me, it's a tamiya that people would feel there's a possibility that it's it. Someone would ask me, why don't you wear trellis? They ask me the street, the short answer. I tell them, look, it's 50-50 if it's a fish or a snail. That's 50-50. Then, there's a three-way machlaikis if you need one string of trellis or two or four. So that's right away, like 75-25, I'm doing it wrong. So, like, what are the possibilities, what are the odds that it's correct? The long answer is really that you have these three stark akashas. That if the molecule is identical to Kali Ilan, it can't be it. <coughs> it cannot be it. And that uh Seida, it can't be it. You're not Chayvan Seida. And if, 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 if you need it, Zvulun, so if I care, it has to be something in the deep sea. It can't be something you can catch at the beach. The, the films they took showing people bringing it up were taken from the, from the beach, from the ground, it's just a, with, a, with a video camera of the people going out in the little boat and getting it. You don't need sailors for it. You get your Shiva boys to do it. Anyway, that's my point. My point is, a halacha point, I don't mean to do anything political. I think in certain circles, the tchidnut cheles is very much like the black hat is in the yeshiva world. It took on a, a meaning of its own. It identifies you with a certain Torah velt. And so I'm not saying there's no avera to wear it. That's the old taina. But this giloi, that if you sit down, you take out shas, and you, 
when you take out this, this, the svarim that are printed to describe the murex, and you try to make it shtim, if you go just with Rishayim and Gemara, you're going to find very little, come out, no rayas, you'll find Shverakaitan with Terutzin, or Shverakaitan without Terutzin. But just Bedera Halimud, to me, it's something of a, of a double pell. That's the old time that anything lost. Money is anything lost is that we don't change the way Klal Yisrael, what? Money. Money is one thing. But let's say this... A, a 2% chance... You don't, we don't change Hanhogis and Klal Yisrael 2% chance. You know, someone came out with a new film bias for Bar Mitzvah boys. They all complained that the big bottom don't fit. So he was a Talmud by us in Taravadas, and he came out with it, and he came to Rav Palm. Rav Palm said, wonderful. And so I was waiting to see. Rav Palm went to buy, he bought his Enoch Lestavilla. He didn't buy it. And the Seicher told him, I have it. He didn't buy it. He says he buys like we always bought. You know, they have the new one that's narrower and taller. It's got 100% kosher. But, you know, if you look at it, it doesn't look like the filler we want. There's nothing lost by wearing it. There's Lachat Chila that it should, it should not be different colors. It should be either white or the color of the baguette. You lose that lechat chila. It's not a major loss. How do you but, answer the I'll give you what they wrote me. It's unedited. They wrote basically it's fair anyway. I think that's what they wrote. That Rashi says, tell us, how are you going to answer it anyway? And um, I, I'll show it to you. You can read it. But it's impossible to say that Satan I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. I can give you in the Torah Ma'ad that they answered. Also, I don't think the words even make... To me, the words, it's like it's, some lines are missing. I don't know. It's, it doesn't seem to make sense. Okay, we're being uh, told that I have to end with uh, Tavar Machshav. It's not Tavar Machshav on what I said already. Mm-hmm. But, uh, okay, I'll... Uh, I'll be Mishana from all the other years. You're going to be Mishana. <laughs> Tell you machshava that I had. It's by me a new machshava. Just thinking about it, it bothered me very often on the bracha Ata Gibar. Loyla Hashem. We all know the three brachas of Shemayin Esrei are Avram Yisak and Yaakov Chesed Gevura Tferes. So the first bracha is Chesed, which we can see very well. Shbaruch is Kainei Akel Zecher Chastei Yavais. The second bracha is supposed to be Gevura Yitzchak. So Yitzchak is Gevura is Midas Adin. So what's the bracha? Mechayi Mason. As an aside to this, I was once listening to, to, to Rav Hutner on tape. He wasn't talking about the Gibar. But he mentioned, he was talking about Chiyas Mason. He said, Chiyas Mason is the biggest chesed that could ever be in the Bria. You give someone Chiyas, when you didn't have Chiyas, the biggest chesed. So it, 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 it reinforced my problem. What's it doing in the bracha of Midas Adin? Why is the bracha of Midas Adin the bracha of Chiyas Mason? It was something that irked me and, uh, and uh, I'm not sure still how to answer it I don't know why it's not discussed at length however there is one mahaloth which is maybe a very important mahaloth it's the Gemara Ksubis the Gemara says that one of Rabbi Yechon's Talmidim was it Chanina I don't remember came to him and he told him that an Amor Aretz doesn't get up by Tchiyas HaMesim. You have no Tchiyas HaMesim and, uh, and uh, Eilam Abba, two different things. You call Yisrael Yashem Chelek or Eilam Abba. He told him, Amor Aretz don't, have, don't, have, don't get up by Tchiyas HaMesim. So Rabbi Yechon said, Lo Nicha Lo Maraychul Dalei Mahachi. From Yid, he just never learned. So he, what he, the Mishon doesn't like you should say it. So Gemara says he came back to him and he said, Matzasi Lahem Takana. I found a ticket for them. What's the tikkun? That somebody who supports Lime Day Taira also has a uh, has a chelik in the limud. Meila has a chelik in Tchias Hamais. So what we see from that Gemara is that somebody could be a fromiyid all his life and keep all the mitzvahs, uh, but if he's not zaychet to, to limud Taira to support limud Taira, then. Uh, then he has no chelik in Tchiyas Hamesim. This Kol Yisrael Yisham chelik lo Elam Abba is true, but Chol Kol Yisrael Yisham chelik in Tchiyas Hamesim. There's no such, there's no such hanochah at all. We have someone in our neighborhood, a very nice gentleman who never never was in yeshiva. He, he had he had a, a son. His son today is in Israel. 
When his son was in 12th grade, he brought him to my house when once a Shabbos, I should talk some sense into him. The son only wanted to learn for the rest of his life. He didn't want to do anything else. And he and that book, he's only a 12th grader, he already has these Mishagasim in his mind. So the father brought him, he was going to Israel. next year he has to promise to go to college. So he rather knew the father. I told the father, why did you major in? He told me. So what's your parnosa in? I know Shaykhis, of course. He says, no, I was different. <laughs> I was different. Why well, are you different? Yet you have to maybe. <laughs> no, no, circumstances just worked out, you know. So anyway, he was for, for a year or two very tzibrachin over this today. Baruch Hashem, is nachas. His son is already married, learning in Eretz Yisrael. Every time he says, I can't believe I have a kid like this. So he always tells me, but he's happier. So I told him, Baruch Hashem was good to you. You have no chelik in Chiyas HaMesim. So now you're supporting Bakarchach, but you're supporting Alay Mitayr. So now, you know, you'll have, you'll have a chelik. You'll get up with him. You'll be very proud to get up with him at Chiyas HaMesim. The idea of Atta Gibar Alam Hashem seems to be that Chiyas HaMesim is Midas Adin. That it's not true that a person has a right to Chiyas HaMesim. It has to do with a Midas Adin of Liman Atayra. Well, how much Liman Atayra you need, I don't know. Rabbi Yaakov in the Sefer, in Chumish and Bracious, he, he has to explain. Rabbi Yaakov held to say, Meirin HaGeshem, not HaGoshem. And most of the world changed. When we were boys, everyone said Marit HaGoshem. Rabbi Yaakov said it should be Marit HaGeshem, and it changed. The Kashi said, why is it Marit HaTal? Why is it not Marit HaTal? Those who have inspired, say Marit HaTal, and it's Nachta. So then it's Marit HaGoshem, it's Nachta. What's the difference? So Rabbi Yaakov is Masber. He says that Marit HaGeshem goes on the next words. Mechal Kachayim Bechesed, rain is Mechal Kachayim. But Tal has nothing to do with Mechal Kachayim. Mayur Atal goes on the Tal Atchia of Tchias Hamesim. It goes together with Bechayim Mesim Atar Rav Leishia. Mayur Atal is it's a snachta. That's how Rabbi Yaakov explains it. Even the Tal is Tal of Tchias Hamesim. The point is really that the the Tchias Hamesim is midas adin. It has to do with learning. We may be as bold as to say that really all chiyus that the Rabbanu Shalom gives, any chayim that the Kaddish Baruch Hu gives, is given. With a midas hadin, with a demand that a person make use of his time. Animals also are alive. There's no midas hadin on animals. They're alive. They do what they want. A human being is given chios with the mida of the gavura of the rabbi Nishal, with the demand that the time be used. Yitzchak Avinu is the one who had to touch up why, why people are wasting their time. And the Gemara says in Shabbos. So this machshava is the machshava that I had that the Atta Gibra and Oilam Hashem, the, the biggest Midas Adin of the Rabbi Nishal Oilam is the Tviya that has to do with Zman, has to do with using one's time, learning properly, using one's time to learn or support learning to, properly. Today, it bothers a lot of us who are in Chinuch. A lot, a lot of tzedakah money gets sent to types of tzedakahs which are questionable how important they are in Kali Yisrael. People like to give money to. I don't want to say anything, I'm going to get in political trouble. But all kinds of tzedakahs, they don't, don't have to do really with Liman It takes away from the kupas at tzedakah of the yeshivas. And uh, one person gave a million dollars to a certain tzedakah. Which, again, it's a nice tzedakah, you know, it's a very nice thing. It's not doing Liman And uh, somebody was very star because he's a nadvin who gives, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars uh, to Tarvadasi here. He gave a million dollars there. So I told him, he's just not zaycha. To be zaycha, to support Torah and Lamdei Torah. Kadosh Baruch Hu didn't give him the schos. He needs schos. My point is that the midas adin is to support learning, to sit and learn, to spend a person's time learning. Kadosh Baruch Hu gives us time. He gives us the time that we should use it properly. Hashreichem, you know, I'm very for people learning on Matzah Shabbos, especially going to Shiurim on Matzah Shabbos. It's a very good idea. And I hope uh, over the summer months you're not going to neglect it. You'll continue uh, to have Siddharam on Messiah Shabbos. And may it be that the Chiyas uh, Mason comes from the, the pleasure of uh, the loose bone of, of Matzah Shabbos. It's not only from eating, the pleasure of learning. Alchaz Kama Vakama. Shalom B'Zeichet to the Karev Namish.